Hello, church families. This is Pastor Mabley, uh, Sunday School families. It's a joy uh, to spend this time with you and to talk with you a little bit more about the scripture verse that we're looking at for uh, last Sunday uh, and then to this week as well, since we're not in person. So I'm going to try and keep this uh, short, uh, but wanted just to read through the actual text itself, uh, highlighting a few things for you to think about and talk about as a family. Uh, again, we're in the context of creation, where God created the universe uh, in six days. Um, what we see here now, uh, going from the end of chapter one into uh, chapter two, is um, God is going back to give us further detail uh, on those events on the sixth day of creation when he created mankind, humans. Uh, so that begins again, um, as we're looking this week, Genesis Chapter 1 will begin with verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Uh, real quick, um, here we see a, a hint of the fact that God is Trinity or triune. Um, uh, we have uh, verbs um, and, and nouns here um, who, in terms of um, persons, would conflict. Um, but we see here that God, who is one, uh, is talking about making man in our image, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Trinity there. So, um, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds and the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on earth. So see, here we see where we as humans are the, the tops, the pinnacle of creation and God created everything around us for us, um, for us to be blessed by, for us to rejoice in, but also for us to care for. Uh, verse 27, so God created man in his own image. That means here without sin. So this is before the fall into sin. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. So he created us as binary, either male or female. Anything else um, is not a reflection of God's creation. Verse 28, and God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds and over the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So one of the main purposes uh, and works for which God gave Adam and Eve in the garden and still gives humanity today is to uh, have families, to have children, to continue to grow the human population here on earth. That's what it means to go forth and multiply. Multiply. Uh, so we rejoice in every human life uh, that is created uh, and, and born. Um, so, okay. Um, and God says, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every tree for plant for food. And it was so. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. There was evening and there was morning the sixth day. So this is the uh, kind of an overview of that last day of creation. And at the end of it, God had created everything. And he looked back and he said, it is each of the other days. He said it is good. But now that it is complete, he says it is very good. So let's go into chapter two, where God's going to go back and he's going to give us some more detail uh, into uh, how he created Adam and Eve. It would be like for me to say to you, hey, did you know that the Bears won the football game uh, last week? Um, and then to say, here, let me tell you how they did it in the fourth uh, quarter. Uh, in the last minute, they scored this amazing touchdown. That's kind of what God is doing here. So let's continue with chapter two. And thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. Now, God takes his last day and he rests not because he's tired, 
but because uh, he rejoices in all that he has done. And that's what we do on the Sabbath, on the day of rest, on Sunday, as we rejoice in all that God has done for us. And it also reminds us that rest, not just sleeping at night, but taking a day um, of the week and finding time to rest our bodies as well as our souls through worship, we rest our bodies as well. Too often we find ourselves uh, filling our weekends with way too much to get done. Um, and we can learn from God not only um, through worship in resting our finding rest for our souls, but in, in taking some quiet time as well, spending time together with family. Verse 3, so he blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. And when, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now keep in mind here too, and we could go into a lot more of this. And when you get you or your kids get to confirmation, we'll talk about this in more detail. But the fact that this is six 24-hour days. We're confident of that from God's word. Even science speaks to this, um, that God created uh, the heavens uh, and the earth and everything in six 24-hour days. Um, verse 5. When no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. See, we've gone back into that sixth day. Uh, and a mist was going up from the land and was watering the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living creature a couple things here to note um, everything else in creation god simply spoke it into being but here god very directly and intimately creates man from the dust that's actually what the name adam means in the hebrew it's adama which means from the dust also to note that God creates the body, but then he breathes into that body life. So we understand that to be body and spirit or body and soul. Both of them are equally you, and you can rejoice in that. Then the Lord God formed the man, uh, oh, sorry, um, verse 8, and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed and out of the ground, the Lord God made, a, made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first was Pishon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Bdelium and onyx stones are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is, on, it is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris. Now, this is one that we still know. Uh, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Again, another river that we know. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to keep it. Um, and the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, this is before there was sin in the world, but yet God still had things for man, for Adam and Eve to do. And when God said, don't do it, Adam and Eve went, okay, that's great. We won't do it. It's only after sin comes into the world when we don't like to be told what to do or what not to do. At this point, Adam and Eve were great with it because they knew their creator loved them and they would do everything they could to please him. Now, at this point, it's just Adam. 
Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Remember, we talked about good and very good. Now, in the context of the sixth day, God creates Adam and Adam's alone. There's no girl. And God says, that could be better. It's not good. So at the end of the sixth day, after he had created Adam and Eve, he says, it's very good, right? It should, uh, it's, it's not good that man should be alone. I will make for him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Wouldn't that be cool to be the one that gives names to all the animals? And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper fit for him. Still, Adam is alone. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fell upon the man. And while he slept, he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and we're not ashamed. Can you imagine that? We get kind of embarrassed and we feel awkward and silly when we're naked. But for Adam and Eve, before sin, there was no shame. There was no awkwardness. Also, we see here how God not only creates man and woman, but he creates this wonderful thing called marriage where a husband, a man and a woman come together and they love each other and they care for each other. And, and God, through this relationships of moms and dads, creates life, life in children, life in all of us, because we were all children at one time. We were all born. And here we see God creating this wonderful thing that we still enjoy today. Mothers and fathers, husbands and wives, families together. I bet in the midst of this COVID lockdown, you spent more time at home. Um, hopefully you've, you've been able to rejoice in that, uh, to have a great time with mom and dad. So that's the text for this week uh, in the Luther's explanation of this first article where we talk about believing in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. We see where God the Father still creates and he still blesses us with everything we need for this life. So I would encourage you, um, children, um, moms and dads, if you have any questions, anything at all, um, please uh, shoot me an email, write it down. I would love to answer those questions, would love to make these videos in part um, uh, also an opportunity to ask any or to answer any questions as best as I can for you. Um, I'm going to say a quick prayer then and we'll be done. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of creation, for the blessings of families, and for life and all that you do for us. Um, help us to always look to you and you alone for all that is good in this life. We thank you, Lord, for moms and dads, for brothers and sisters, and for all people, for they are all created and loved by you, handmade by you, even today in our mother's womb. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.